Hey guys, Ty, your Metalhead Weatherman here. Really more so Ty, because this is more or less a reaction to what we saw yesterday morning, which was um, Hurricane Otis made landfall on the on, towards uh, Alcapoco as a uh, Category 5 hurricane. Absolutely the last thing I was expecting. I don't know if you remember, but for those of you that did watch, it didn't get many views, but we did a tropical update on the 23rd, and we were watching Otis. Otis was a tropical storm, obviously, at that time, but things clearly escalated far beyond what anybody could have imagined. This wasn't in any forecast. I saw a chance for it maybe becoming a major hurricane, but that happened within the last like day or so before landfall. Within 24 hours, though, to expect this to uh, strengthen from tropical storm to category five, Really, more so than 12 hours is unbelievable. This is from uh, Tom Berg Weather on uh, Twitter. Here he has a uh, he has a uh, satellite imagery and satellite loop of uh, Otis uh, strengthening from tropical storm all the way to Category Five within the 24-hour period. It is uh, unbelievable watching this. Like I'm shocked just watching how quickly this thing just spun up as quick as it did this is this almost kind of reminds me of how uh some uh, supercell storms produce tornadoes like it, it just how quickly this spun up I'm, I'm still just flabbergasted not even i'm just stunned just looking at it i'm still trying to find the right words for exactly what we saw here but um unfortunately because of this rapid intensification and unfortunately with uh, Mexico not having quite the same weather infrastructure as far as the U.S. In fact, honestly, there's not too many continent that's, continents that even come close, let alone other countries. Mexico doesn't even have uh, that many weather radars compared to us. So uh, it kind of makes me shudder to think how little warning these guys had and the fact that this hit a very very heavily populated area in fact a million people live in Acapulco it's a, uh, it's a hot tourist spot as well so the damage of course is uh, incomprehensible I can only imagine this is from uh, Cricket and Cinema on Twitter by the way gives those guys a follow as well but looking at the damage here and this is only probably one small part of town it's unbelievable it looks just like a bomb went off unfortunately and it's just crazy to see this because uh, like I said I don't really think anyone could have forecasted this even the best forecasters on the planet probably weren't expecting this but just it's um, it's mind-blowing it is and my thoughts my thoughts my heart on uh, only goes out to these people at this point, man. It's just crazy to think about. Of course, there's other stuff going on in the world right now. And I have my thoughts on that as well. But we're here to talk about weather, of course. Um, so one thing that I've definitely made note of, and I talked about a little bit, but I wasn't sure if it was going to end up uh, doing anything of uh, significance, was the fact that Otis was over an area where the sea surface temperatures were going to be extensively warm. And unfortunately, it did do exactly what I was hoping it would not do. And that's take full advantage. 90 degrees sea surface temperatures. 90 degrees sea surface temperatures. Man, this is crazy. To think that, uh, to think that uh, these kinds of sea surface temperatures are able to do that, it's very alarming. And then the other thing to make note of here, the other thing to make note of, um, this is uh this is over the eastern pacific right now this is actually two other systems to keep a close eye on and one is heading looking like it could be heading in a very similar direction so i am nervous with this one now because we saw what we saw from this and if we were to look at the sea surface temperatures it's still hot 30 degrees Celsius is about 87 degrees and that's very alarming and the thing is with that storm strengthening so rapidly you don't get what's called upwelling 
Upwelling is where those cooler temperatures, which are deep beneath the sea surface, end up being pulled for. So as a result, if another storm were to go over this area, we could see another similar result. So the Eastern Pacific has to be watched very closely. Of course, the Atlantic is being watched a lot, close, lot closer, of course, but sometimes the Eastern Pacific can occasionally be forgotten, and it was in this case. So I would really, I'm really going to try to focus a lot more on the uh, tropics over here towards the Eastern Pacific. I've done okay, but like I said, I don't think anyone could have expected this. I don't, I definitely didn't. And uh, all we can do is hope that we don't see another situation like this at any time, especially before the end of this year, because hurricane season, just like in the Atlantic, ends here November 30th. So still plenty of time left. And with temperatures like this, it's very alarming. So just make sure that you're smashing that like button, decimating that subscribe button, hitting that share button, and make sure you have the bell on. Be notified of every video that I make because we're going we're gonna to crack, start to crack down on this. Got to try to see if I can help with the warning process as best as I can because stuff like this is, uh, it, while I can't control it, maybe I can make a difference. But that being said, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. I'll have a video later tonight talking about the Arctic blast that could be heading this way. But until then, take care, have a nice day, and I'll see you soon.